Welcome to Victory Bible Time, sponsored by Victory Baptist Church of Codin, Alabama. Victory Bible Time appreciates your listening to the broadcast each time and pray it is a blessing to you. And stay tuned at the end of today's broadcast for the address. The speaker is Brother Robert Reed, pastor of Victory Baptist Church. And now, Brother Reed. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glad to have you with us again today. And we hope that the radio broadcast is a blessing to all. Now, we're reading today from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and simple title to our message today is the Gospel of Christ. Let me read from verses 1 through 4. The Apostle Paul writing the letter to the Corinthian church, and he says this beginning in verse 1. Now, this is the Word of God, and he says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, but which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to to Scripture. Well, Heavenly Father, we do ask today your blessings upon the reading of Holy Scripture, and Father, we pray that your anointing and blessing would be upon it, and we pray, Lord, for the saints that they would be edified, and that the sinner would come to saving faith in Jesus Christ, for it's in his name we pray, amen and amen. Well, before we actually get into our text today, let me make mention uh, of some resources that are available to you. Uh, you can find us on the web. You can find us at biblicaltruth.info. And uh, on that website, we have hundreds of, of articles and sermons, literally hundreds of articles and sermons. And most of these sermons are full-length sermons that have been preached in the church. Now, that website, again, is biblicaltruth.info. That is I-N-F-O. And you can also find us at sermonaudio.com. If you go to sermonaudio.com, there's many other ministers on there. So go to the sidebar and scan down to the section titled Speakers and Type in my name, which is Robert Reed, and that would carry you to your to our home page. If you go to biblicaltruth.info, I-N-F-O, that carries you to our personal website, and again, hundreds of articles and also sermons. There's other things on there, but the uh, the website basically is centered around uh, the written Word of God and the preaching of God's Word. Well, let us look at our text here today, and we will notice that in 1 Corinthians 15, the entire chapter is dealing, really, with the gospel. It is dealing with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and also the resurrection of the saints of God. And we find that there's 58 verses, and this, we could call this the resurrection chapter. We find many details given to us in 1 Corinthians 15, dealing with the resurrection, again, of Jesus Christ, and Him being the firstfruits, as in verse 20, and the resurrection of the children of God, when the Lord Jesus comes at his second advent. So the whole chapter is centered around, uh, again, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ with great emphasis placed upon his resurrection and our resurrection as well. Now, when we speak of the gospel of Christ, Uh, The greatest story ever heard 
it is a love story, as in John 3.16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When we use the word gospel, we're talking about good news. Uh, we're talking about a good story. Uh, the most important message of the Holy Scriptures is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, why is that important? Now, let me say this first of all. In verses 3 and 4, we see clearly what the gospel is. The good news that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to scripture. An amazing statement that is given to us here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, why is the gospel the most important message of the Holy Scripture? Uh, it's, it is summarized, uh, the most important message is summarized in the word gospel. The word gospel has the ideal of good news, a good story. Well, in Romans 1.16, we find that the gospel is the power of, of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. In Mark chapter 1, we're told there to repent and believe the gospel. In 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 14, again, it is called the gospel. So this word is used a number of times. Now, notice with me, uh, we're going to look at three uh, vital components or three uh, important truths centered around the gospel, and that is the death, burial, and resurrection. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The death uh, is centered around Christ becoming a substitution uh, for uh, our sins. His burial shows the evidence that he did die for the sins of humanity. And then his resurrection, uh, we see according to Romans 4 and 5, it is for our justification. Now notice again, let's come back to our text, and I want to begin reading in verse 1. He said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand by which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. Now, notice it's according to the Scriptures. If we go back into the Old Testament, we find that this is prophetically true. It's according to Scripture. And uh, many times in the New Testament, we find the apostles and the Lord himself quoting from the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the foundation for the New all of the prophecies were given in the Old Testament and fulfilled in what we now call the New Testament. Now notice he said in verse 2 again, he said, By which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. The word vain here, and this is, by the way, a warning against uh, non-saving faith. The word vain here has the ideal of without effect, that which is empty and worthless, valueless, that which is not genuine, that which is false, that which has no substance or basis uh, on which the belief is given. So we find here that he says, by which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless, notice, you have believed in vain. So we find the most important uh, message of the Holy Scripture is summarized in the word 
gospel. The word gospel, the good news uh, uh, to humanity that God gave his son and his son gave his life, died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. Now, the three vital truths connected with the gospel of Christ, first of all, is his death in verse 3 and 4. The gospel is about the person and work of Jesus Christ. His death, he gave his life uh, as a substitute or a sacrifice. We find there's other words that are given to us in Scripture. He became our propitiation according to Romans 3, verses 19 through 26. And the word propitiation means to satisfy or make favorable. In other words, it speaks of that which satisfies the justice of God. It contemplates our liability to wrath and deliverance through his substitution for sin. You find that we are sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're not only born in sin, Romans 5, 12, but we commit sin. All have sinned, all are sinners, and are in need of a Savior. So Christ's death, he became a sacrifice, he became a substitute for our sins. In Hebrews 9 and verse 5, the word propitiation uh, the Greek word that's translated propitiation, rather, in Romans chapter 3, uh, is translated mercy seat uh, in Hebrews 9 and in verse 5. And uh, the mercy seat in the Old Testament was where God met with his people. It was a covering for the ark. The law was in the ark. It represented uh, God's throne. Uh, the mercy seat was a place between God and the broken law, and the blood was sprinkled on the mercy seat uh, once a year on the Day of Atonement. And so what I'm saying uh, to you is that uh, Christ, his death, he died for sins. Why? Because we're in sins. The problem in this world is sin. It's not ignorance or uh, uh, anything else. It, that The problem is sin. The solution is not education. The solution is the blood that Jesus Christ shed at uh, Calvary's cross and st to, to solve the problem of sin. So I want to leave that with you today, is that Christ gave his life. He literally died on the cross. And uh, in Revelation 13, 8, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ uh, was planned out by God uh, before the foundation of the world because it says there that he's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So this was not an accident. It was something was planned out before God ever created man and placed him in the paradise in the Garden of Eden. Uh, God knew that man would fail. And so before the foundation of the world, uh, Christ's death burial, and resurrection was planned out. Well, what about his burial? His burial is the evidence, and, and it shows the reality of his death. Only the Son of God could stay three days and three nights in the tomb and come forth. In Matthew 27 they, in verse 57 through 66, those preparations were made for his burial, and also the tomb was sealed by a stone, and a watch was set. He, he did not merely swoon, as some say, only to be revived later. In other words, he actually died. That's important according to John 2, verses 18 through 22. You see, the way he died was by crucifixion, six long hours. Uh, it, this was planned, for, the, for death by crucifixion could have been avoided. There were other means of capital punishment in that day, like stoning and other things of that nature. And so uh, this was planned out, 
in eternity past that Christ would die for the sins of the world. There's many verses that bring this to light. So we have his death on Calvary's cross, shedding his blood for the sins of the world. This is the Son of Almighty God. This is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in flesh, First Timothy 3, and in verse 16. We have his death, his burial. Again, this is the evidence that he did die. It shows the reality of his death. Again, only the Son of God uh, could stay three days and three nights in uh, the tomb and then come forth. No other man has ever done this, and no, no other man could ever do this. Only God in flesh could do this. And then the third thing we have is his resurrection. And his resurrection is for our justification. This is proof that our sins were paid for at Calvary's cross. I want you to notice that in verse 13 through 19 of our passage, he says, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain, yea? And we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he uh, uh, raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that there that the dead rise not, verse 16, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, and you're yet in your sins, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished, verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Think about that statement. He's proving the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's proving that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the only way that we can have eternal life. This ultimate sacrifice uh, and his death manifested to the world in his resurrection, he is declaring that our sins have been paid for. In Acts chapter 17, verse 22 through 33, uh, 22 through 32 rather, uh, we have assurance. He has given assurance unto all men in that he raised him from the dead. Uh, Jesus said in John 11, verse 25 and through 27, he says, I am the resurrection and life. His resurrection confirmed his deity. He's the Son of God. He's the true Messiah. And uh, we find that uh, his resurrection is so important and a vital part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Romans 4.25, the resurrection is essential to our justification and our peace, according to Romans 5 and verse 1. This is why he starts out in Romans 1, verse 1 through 4, the gospel of God. And in verse 16 through 18, he speaks of the gospel that is the power of of God unto salvation. This is so important. Uh, many overlook this. Many want to deny this. But we find that the gospel, the Apostle Paul said he was not ashamed of it. It's the power of God unto salvation. Everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek, verse 17 of Romans 1, well, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Absolutely essential that we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Again, throughout First Corinthians, throughout First Corinthians chapter fifteen, we see the issue focusing upon the resurrection not only of Jesus Christ, but the resurrection of the saints of God. In verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the firstfruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
but every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. We find the importance of the resurrection. In verse 50, in verse 50, he says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says in verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. What we have in this chapter is a detailed description of, Again, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and following this, at his second coming, the resurrection of every person that is born again, that has put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is so important. Acts 17, 22-32, there is a day coming where God shall judge the world by that man, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and he was raised from the dead, and those who put their faith in him, they can have assurance that they also will be raised again. Now, when we talk about the gospel, listen to Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. Notice the importance of the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection. The resurrection is proof. Now listen to me. The resurrection is proof that my sins have been paid for because God placed our sins upon the Lord Jesus Christ who had never sinned. When he died on Calvary's cross, our sins was put to his account, and he died for our sins. And the very fact that he was raised from the dead, see, the wages of sin is death. The very fact that he was raised from the dead is proof positive that our sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, that our sins was imputed to him, and he settled the issue of sin once and for all. And when he hang on the cross, he says some of his last words were, it is finished. In other words, he had finished redemption for humanity. And the Bible says clearly that we must believe the gospel, we must receive this gospel. If we reject this good news, this gospel story, then we will end up in hell and the lake of fire. Again, Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thy heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from sin and saved from the condemnation of hell, saved from the judgment of God. He said, For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He said in verse 11, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. He says in verse uh, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
So those who will call on Jesus Christ, believing the gospel, repenting of their sins, he has promised that he would save them. And in verse 17, he says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I want to say this also. In verse 16 of Romans 10, the gospel has to be obeyed. He talks about those who obeyed not the gospel of Jesus Christ in the first century. The gospel must be received. It must be believed. It must be obeyed. There are those in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that we find that that, uh, it says, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that they would receive damnation. He says this, he said that that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. They were given a strong delusion. Why? Because they believed not the truth. They believed not the gospel. They obeyed not the gospel. The gospel has to be obeyed. It has to be received. Coming back to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4 again. Verses 1 through 4. The apostle said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received. Notice it has to be received. And he said, Wherein ye stand, they not only received it, but they, they put their faith and trust in it. They, they stood in this principle, this truth. And he said in verse, verse 2, And by which also you're saved. So we're saved by this gospel that we receive and that we stand in, by which also you're saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. There are many today that believe in vain. They have an empty faith, and they, they say they believe, they say they trust the Scripture. There's no fruit. There is nothing in their life that gives evidence of the fact that they have been born again by the Spirit of God. And so he says in verse 2, By which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Many today have an empty faith. They have a vain faith that is not genuine. It's fruitless. It's false. It has no value of importance. In other words, they are considered as vain believers. So I will leave with you today the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ. We find here that the gospel of Jesus Christ has to do with his death, burial, and resurrection. Again, in verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to Scripture. I'm just saying to you today that salvation is in Christ. It's through what he accomplished at Calvary. Receive him today, and God has promised he would save you, said in Acts 20, 21, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. God is still in the saving business, and the blood of Jesus Christ will wash your sins away, and you can have eternal life. Trust him now and believe on him, for he will save you, as in Romans 10, 9 and verse 13, if you'll call upon the name of the Lord, he will save you. Well, the time is just about come and gone. We'll thank you again for listening to the broadcast. Keep in mind, you can find us at biblicaltruth.info. That is biblicaltruth.info. And you can find us also at sermonaudio.com. If you go to that website, you'd need to go to the the side section and find the speakers and type in my name, which is Robert Reed. Thank you again for listening to the broadcast. We'd love to hear from you if you've been saved through the broadcast. Or if you have been blessed, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, may God richly bless you. You have been listening to Victory Bible Time with Brother Robert Reed, pastor of Victory Baptist Church. The address, Victory Baptist Church, P.O. Box 257, Coden, Alabama, 36523. Location in Coden, Alabama, on Bellingrath Road, about three miles south of Bellingrath Gardens. Times of services, Sunday morning at 10.30, Sunday evening at 6, and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. 
Again, thank you for listening to Victory Bible Time, Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on WOSM FM 1031. Until next time, may the Lord's blessings be upon you.